Neil from Messick's here with Paul Smith. We're going to talk a little bit this morning about some of the amazing innovations you have in hay equipment that's driving out in the field. Um, you wouldn't believe all that's happening on some of this machinery as it's out running around. There is some amazingly sophisticated mechanical technology in this equipment, specifically in these baler nodders. Paul here is going to help me a little bit. Paul is a living encyclopedia of hay equipment. Tell us a little bit about your history with New Holland. Actually, I started out working for New Holland in 1971. About 38 years later, I retired. I was in the field the whole time. I was a service, we called a service rep, and we were responsible to take care of the equipment and stuff that was in the field, help the dealers if they had problems with it. We taught service schools and stuff for the dealers' mechanics. And, and helped out with shows and stuff like Ag Progress. And at that time, we were at Harrisburg Farm Show. So those are some of the things I did. <laughs> One cannot understate the impact that Paul has had in our dealership and our success in A equipment. Many of the technicians that are here have learned from you over the years, and you're a big part in educating our staff and customers here as time has gone on. So thanks for taking the time here with me today. Six. A helping hand with your land. This is a knotter. This is actually off a small square baler. And as far as the function of it, it's exactly the same today as it was when it was actually engineered and put on here by Ed Knoll when he built the first baler. Okay. And what it does here is the string's going to come up here like this. And this is how you thread a knotter. The string will come up. The needle brings it up here, lays it in what we call a twine disc. It rotates, and now our baler is threaded. Now this all happens, the needles are going to go up and back down in less than half a second. And this bill hook in here, which actually ties the knot and stuff, that rotates at about three-tenths of a second. So it's all real quick. So th this is re-threading the portion up here every time, right? So like when you, when you start yeah. this from scratch, you're just putting the twine through the needle down here at the bottom? Yes. And then the needle brings it up. The needle brings it up. As the bales form, the twine comes rolling back here around the bale. Once we get the length bale we want, it actually trips off. The needle brings the string up. Lays it into the twine disc right here. Actually, what we call a twine finger comes right across here, brings the number two twine down against the bill hook. The bill hook rotates. And the knife arm comes across, wipes the knot off, and we've got a knot. There you go. Yeah. Just that simple. <laughs> Yes. Where, where does this, so this is driven from where? Oh, right. Here. The, yes. And actually, this is an older, real old baler case. The new balers all drive from this side. The older balers, 273 and like that, actually had a chain that came here and drove this. Okay. The new ones actually have a gear drive and stuff that actually drives it with a gear. Now, you can see it on that baler if you want to look at it. There's a shaft coming here with a gear, worm gear on it, and that's actually driving here. And that's hooked up to the flywheel. The flywheel here drives this chain. Uh -huh. The chain drives the shaft. The shaft comes back and drives the knotter frame. So there's, there's nothing in the knotter that's moving until no, right. until the this is tripped back here. Yeah. This is actually what's sitting here just like this. And there's this paw on the inside. And here you see that little spring yeah. right here. Like now this is tripped off. Yeah. Okay. We're just bailing along now. We're bailing a bale. This paw right here, which is this, here on this roller, is hit against here and that holds it disengaged. So the knotter's not being driven. The knotter's just sitting there, okay? When this trips off here, that trips off and that paw, the spring pulls that paw out like this. 
there's a drive lug, which is right here where these bolts are, and this is on your knotter shaft, okay? As that turns, because the knotters have to be timed to the plunger and stuff, as that rotates and stuff, when it gets to the right spot, that starts to turn our knotters, and then we go through the tying cycle. Then we get a full bale. As that's being formed, this arm comes back here, resets itself, the paw hits here, and disengages the drive. <laughs> So this is all while you're out in the field and this isn't operating. None of this is moving, right? That's, it's just th this gear here moves. Okay. But that but is the, it, the, is nothing it over here moves. Right, until until it trips. Until this star wheel basically has this comes back, this goes up and then trips the whole thing off. Trips the whole thing off. Nodder does I would describe it as it does a couple things. One, this, this is how you're looking at the knotter from there. Right. And we're just going to turn it around so here, but you've got a knife arm and you got a bell hook here. Okay. And are your twine disc or twine clamps here? Okay. So as the twine comes in here, our disc or our twine disc here. The twine lays in that, we have a clamp here that clamps the twine into here. As it rotates, this rotates around, that rotates a quarter of a turn, it's being formed, it brings another notch over here, okay. At that point, the twine, two twines are across your bill hook, here like that. And so, so your bill hook is going to make its revolution here. The tongue's going to open and close and tie a knot. When the bill hook makes its home position here, the knife arm is going to come across. It's going to wipe the knot off from the bill hook, and then the knife here on the back side is going to cut the twine and stuff, and that's when you get your knot. So when you're forming a bale, the twine is like this being pulled along. Okay, it goes across the top of the bale. It keeps pulling it. When you get a full bale and it trips off, the needle comes up and doing it thing. It's got the twine, it lays the second twine onto the bill hook. Okay. As the bill hook rotates, comes around here, and about now the tongue opens. It lays the twine between the tongue and the bill. It closes down. Tension sign there. Then the knife arm pulls this across. In this case here, there's nothing to cut it, so we're going to pull. Yep, and then that pinches it and pulls it through. Pulls it through like this. The knife arm cuts it and you got a knot. <laughs> Just pulls like it through, of course it cuts it and stuff. So you don't, you don't have a tail like that. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of like incredibly simple, but at the same time incredibly complicated. So what goes wrong with this thing? Like, what, what's the common failure point usually? Oh, okay. As um, far as problem-wise, yeah. a couple things are, this is our twine disc right here. Yeah. This is our clamp that clamps the string in there. The tighter you bail, the more you got to clamp the string. This little leaf spring right here comes down and puts tension on there to clamp the string. Okay. okay. Over time, this little leaf spring will crack right in here like that so you lose your tension and then the twine will actually pull out of the twine disc so instead of the twine being held here while you form your bale the twine actually pulls out okay okay and then the bale is actually holding the twine because the bales are together the needle brings up the next twine and you have a knot on one end but not on the other end of the string okay that's one thing that'll happen. So that's just from, from that spring there yeah. losing tension. Yes. And then 
Do you have wear issues? Because you've got string basically pulling across this all the time. Yeah. Do, the, do these yeah. pieces wear out over time? It, it, it probably won't show up, but if you look at this one, it's actually quite much, it's a lot larger than here. Okay. And so you can see where that'll wear over time. And then what about the bill hook too? Does that, because you're, that's constantly pulling across that yeah. string, right? This, this is a real old bill hook and stuff. Here you can see how that tongue is almost uh, worn all the way through. That. And in here and stuff, the twine is worn on the bill hook. Okay. That'll cause problems. And actually, after a period of time, you'll see that this bill hook doesn't close in a notch like it should. It actually hits on the bill. Okay. So that would be a problem. At that point, it's not, not going to pinch the twine properly. Yeah, it's not going to pinch the twine. It's not. Knots going to wipe, not wipe off correctly, and, yeah. and cause a problem. Interesting to think that like something as simple as twine rubbing across metal can, yeah, it definitely cut a groove wear. into it. And then the other thing here, we use on the old ones you use porcelain, the newer ones use metal. Mm -hmm. But the twine comes through guides. There's one out here on the needle yoke. There's one where the twine comes out of the twine box. There's actually one right in front of the needle tip. And over a period of time, it'll start to wear grooves in there and stuff. Which, especially if you're switching balls or something where it's tied together and stuff, that'll catch and uh, cause catch the knot when it comes mis -tie through. Mistie and stuff. Yeah. So how does that work? Like, if you tie two balls together, yeah. What if your knot makes it up into the knotter? Is that that's going to cause an issue? Obviously, it could. Yeah, that doesn't seem to happen very you just, often. Right, because you you've got so about, much string yeah. going through, the odds yeah. of it landing in the right yeah. spot aren't that high. For, for a 36 inch bale, it takes around 16 and a half feet of twine. 16 and a half feet. For, okay. With the two knot right, right. strings. So, generationally, you told me this was the early one. This one is here. This is the early one. So, yes. this would have been. Like a 66 baler. Okay. Okay. And then this would be your like 200 series. A, yeah, 300 series. Two 300 series. Yeah. And then, so what, what's the biggest change now between a 300 series and the modern baler? Okay. What, the one thing we have heavy, this baler behind us, it's a heavy duty knotter. Be, um, but the other one would be a standard knotter. The one big change is on your cam gear and stuff, there's hardened surfaces now. Okay. Where the gears start to turn and stuff, they've got hardened surfaces on that. The gears on your, that drive your knotters and stuff, they've got hardened surfaces on them now to make everything last longer yeah. and stuff. The bill hooks, originally the bill hooks used to have a brass roller on them, which was a, definitely a wear item. The new ones are steel, steel okay. rollers. They made some change on the knotter frames and stuff. If you look at an old knotter frame here, okay, the lobe for the bill hook roller was actually cast into the knotter frame. Okay. It was had and ground at the plant. Somebody physically ground that so it would work. As the balers became higher capacity, bales are tighter, they had problems with that. Maybe the guy grinding it was a different guy or something. They now have a bowline cam which is hardened and stuff. So they're all exactly the same. And when they did that, they went from the brass roller to a steel roller on the bill hook. So a majority of the changes are more for durability, consistency, yes. reliability type things and not that the mechanical design no. has... No, mechanically wise, they operate the same as they did on an old baler. They've just added durability to it and longer life because people are bailing tighter than they used to. Yeah. It, that part is super interesting to me when you figure that like this was designed by a guy in a field with no computers. Oh, yeah. Right. And with all the technology that we have today, we have not improved upon no. that. Right. Which is awesome. Yep. First, you speak to people. You always start from, here's your operator's manual. Read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, 
in your experience, how good of a job does the operator's manual explain a nodder? Does Excellent. It, Excellent. I mean, it goes, and if you get an old manual, it's got real life pictures. If you get a newer manual, they're line drawings. Okay. But it goes through every one of the uh, typical misties. It talks about how all the different components should be adjusted and shows how to do that. And actually, um, if you buy some new parts, like if you buy a new knife arm, there's actually an instruction sheet that comes with that that tells you how to install how to it and adjust it on right. a baler. So you get a lot of people coming on YouTube here looking for you know the the YouTube mechanic who's going to come and walk you through fixing all of your stuff. Yeah, you already have the information at home, your your operator's manual and the directions that are going to come with those OEM parts are going to help you, what maintain and tune your own machine to be able to keep you in the field. I guess. Yes. Yes. So I hope the time spent out here with the Nodder today might help you have a little bit greater appreciation for something as simple as a bale of hay. There's a lot of really cool mechanical technology happening here, and I hope you have a little bit greater appreciation for it. Awesome to be able to share some time out here highlighting somebody like Paul too. We are only as good as the people and the manufacturers that back us up. And we here at Messex have been blessed to have an awesome team of people that have surrounded us for decades. So hope to be able to share this bit of Baylor technology with you. If we can help you with a piece of equipment, parts of service needs for a machine you've already got, give us a call at Messex. We're available at 800-222-3373, online at messex.com. Or you could come in here to one of our open houses and have Paul spend some time with you talking you through how a nodder works. It didn't work. <laughs> you don't have time to do that. No. That's why we do things four times. Yeah. If it doesn't work, we just do it again and nobody's none the wiser. <laughs>